Okay, well, um, first I'd like to say thanks to all of you for coming out and being our guinea pigs for the volunteer trail patrol uh, at the Elfin Forest. Um, as you know, this is, um, well, for someone like Devin, you might not know, this has come out of our um, strategic planning process that we did with tech uh, for the park, and we recognize that uh, one of the biggest needs we have in the park is more of a presence in the trails. And with just three rangers total, um, we just can't be out there as much as we can. And we've uh, done a lot of, Simon's done a lot of research. Uh, we've talked to other parks. Um, trail patrol programs are very, volunteer trail patrol programs are very successful out there. So we're kind of taking the best of what we're, we found at, at other parks and we're gonna try and implement it here. So um, thanks again for coming. Thank you, Simon, for putting all this together. Thanks to our guest speakers today, Sean and Jonathan, when he comes up. And um, I'll hand it off to you. Any, well, any questions before we start? Okay. So just, again, we really wanna thank you all for participating in this. This is like, it's a long time coming. It's sort of a momentous occasion for the reserve, for the Escondido Creek Conservancy, and for OMWD, and it's, it would not be possible without volunteers, so thanks again. And also, this is a pilot program, and you guys are, are like our trailblazing guinea pigs. <laughs> so um, I'm sure there will be hiccups along the way, and it's going to sort of be incumbent on you guys to help us refine it as the program evolves. So thanks for that, and let's go ahead and take a look at what we're covering today. Um, this is the first of three training sessions. And there's quite a bit to cover. We're going to try to condense it all into two hours. Hopefully, we'll pull it off. We'll see. Um, but Jeff and I will sort of do an introduction to the program. Um, we'll be talking about the different trails that you can participate in and what sort of routines you'll have when you walk these trails. Um, Jeff will talk about how to sign up for, for shifts and for trails. Sean will come in and do a little presentation on Trail Maintenance 101. And then Jonathan will talk about um, how to use the radios, which you'll all have access to. And you'll also have a tablet, and that will have a few different purposes that Jonathan will also get into. So let's go ahead and get started here. So um, this program came about because, as, as Jeff mentioned, we have quite a bit of acreage at the park, 784 acres, is that correct? Correct, yeah and 11 miles of trail system, and there are only three rangers covering all of this. So there's only so much they can do. They're a little bit overextended. So this idea of the um, volunteer trail patrol team really helps us keep the park up just enough. And again, we really appreciate you getting involved to, to help do this. Um, there are a few different goals for this program. Um, the first, like I said, is to, to help the rangers but also to enhance the trail experience for the different users who are out there. Um, like you, you know, a lot of people walk this trail and they don't even realize that it's operated by OMWD and they don't understand the whole relationship with tech. So you'll be able to sort of be an ambassador for us, which I think is the next point, but also you'll be able to do some interpretation for them, answer questions if they're lost, provide um, first response care if there's ever a need for that, hopefully not. But so it's, it's really going to enhance their experience, we hope. And um, the last goal that I'd like to mention is just that we're hoping the Escondido Creek Conservancy, for those of you who don't know, I, I work for the Escondido Creek Conservancy, um, they're really hoping that this program is such a success and that we build such a roster that we can sort of like um, spill over the program into tech-owned lands that aren't necessarily protected within the reserve because they own over 2,000, owner manage over 2,000 acres in the Escondido Creek watershed. So hopefully long term, we'll be able to get some recruits and start managing land that currently is being unmanaged. So the requirements for this program, you'll see that um, it's pretty much open to everybody, but um, there are some minimum shift requirements, just like if you are dosing at the, the interpretive center, we sort of prefer that you have some minimum coverage. Um, Jeff, do you want to talk about what that is? Yeah, we're going to start off, being a pilot program, we're going to start off with what we have for you as docents now, participation once a month. And for docents, it's one shift a month, um, which is three hours. 
a trail patrol could be anywhere from half an hour to, I don't know, there's probably patrols in here we have that'll take you four or five hours. So we're gonna start off with one patrol a month. You're encouraged to do as many as you'd like, but that's one would just be the minimum. And like I said, um, we encourage your feedback all the time. So in addition to the minimum coverage that we, we request, um, there's also a requirement that you complete all the training. We understand that it's really hectic and difficult to, to be in every session, so we are videotaping them. So prefer you to be here in person, but if you can't, you can watch the video. And at the end of the three two-hour training sessions, there will be a little bit of a quiz that just sort of goes over everything. <laughs> Don't panic, it'll be very simple. <laughs> but yes, do pay attention. <laughs> and um, yeah, you'll have to go through it and pass it with a minimum passing score, probably C average, <laughs> or C or well. Um, yeah, but I wouldn't sweat the quiz. And um, so we are, we'll get into this in just a minute, um, but we, we are covering, or OMWD is covering a lot of the costs for uniforms and things like that, but we do ask that you all pay for your own CPR and first aid and home certification. It's really important while you're out there on the trails. And it's also something that, you know, even outside this program, it's something that helps you. It's good to have, and you can carry it beyond this program. How many of you do not have CPR first aid, ADD? How recent does it need to help? How long does They're it usually every two years. Yeah. yeah. I need a research. So I need to refresh our tone. I have to research. OK. So half of you have it already. That's good. And I have some information of different um, sh different availabilities for classes. Mm -hmm. and depends on where you prefer to go. They're, they're all over San Diego County. Do you, do you guys want like a, like a BLS certification or just basic CPR? Oh, yeah, it's, just, it's your basic like citizen first aid CPR. Okay, easy. Yeah. So, so do, I thought we paid for first aid CPR for this. We do when there's, we have the availability of a course, so we just don't. We've never brought in something special. It's just when there is a course going on that we have extra spots the district would pay to help fill those seats. And since we are paying for uniforms, which isn't really much of an expense for the docents, we sort of want there to be some sort of ownership for the volunteers. It's sort of, you know, if you have some sort of buy-in, it, it helps you um, take ownership of the program and you know, be a little more responsible. That way we don't have people who just are sort of flaky and come in on a whim and then just drop out, you know, the next day. Um, as far as physical requirements go, really, um, it's based on how physical you want to be. We definitely don't want anybody to overextend themselves to really intense things like digging trails or anything like that. Um, if you really can't even go up inclines, at the very minimum, we can even put you in a chair and have you sit by the Iron Ranger at the trailhead and just you know interpret and answer questions for people. So really, there's, I would say that anybody could participate in this program. Um, and again, it's up to you how involved you want to be. You'll, Jeff will go over the different trails. Some of them are a lot longer than others, and you can select the trail that you think is best for your physical capability. Okay. And then, uh, just like the interpretive um, center, you'll have to get a background check. You don't need to do a second one if you're already a docent, but for people like that who's new to the program, and I already have this paperwork, so. And OMWD bears the cost of that, so you don't have to pay anything for that. Oh, and lastly, um, you will have to speak with the public. So if you have some aversion, to, it's not really public speaking. It's just really informal, you know, interactions with people on the trail. But that is a component of it. So we don't want anybody who's just going to like, you know, be all about hiking and not about the human element. Okay. So there are some expectations to be a participant in this program. Um, all those requirements we just mentioned, you're expected to fulfill all those. Um, you do have to, you know, if you sign up for a shift, we ask that you're there on time. Especially, you'll see that um, sometimes the interpretive center, you'll have to check in there at the interpretive center, and we'll go over checking in in just a moment. But um, sometimes there aren't docents on the shift, so a ranger will have to come meet you. So if the ranger is waiting for you and you're not there on time, that you know is not the best use of, of their time. So we, we ask that you're here on time and punctual. You will be an ambassador for, for the reserve, for OMWD, and for the Escondido Creek Conservancy. So we ask that you know you always 
comport yourself with the proper decorum. And um, there will be some equipment that we provide communally that you'll have to like check in and out. And you know, if you use it, we ask that you you sort of clean it up afterwards and always take it back. Just be a good steward of, of whatever equipment there is. And so later on, Sean will be talking about how to maintain this equipment. So I think the uniforms are one of the fun parts of this job. <laughs> So, so this is what we provide. Um, we did a lot of looking into what the best hat would be, and I think we're pretty happy with this hat. Um, it's a completely breathable hat. It's made in the U.S., so that's good. You don't have to worry about contributing to sweatshops or anything like that. Um, there'll be a nice little logo, like a patch on the hat that, that isn't displayed here, but the, the patch that we'll have I don't know if you've seen, we have um, some stickers in the Interpretive Center that say like Elf and Forest and it's, it's like this sort of like generic, like there's like the creek and a bird soaring in the background. Um, so it's that and it'll say Trail Patrol and that'll be on the hat. It will also be on the vest, which we provide. Um, it'll be like sort of just on the breast pocket. And on the back, as you can see, there'll be the letters Trail Patrol so people can identify you. You'll also get um, gloves and you know, Actually, the gloves that you see in this picture probably aren't what you'll get because we want closed fingertips. If you're pulling invasive weeds that have thorns or something like that, or even working with like poison oak, which we don't you know, encourage, um, you're not going to want to be handling those. Those gloves look like you're going to punch somebody. Yeah. More gloves. Gloves. First one. And then we move up in this camera case, actually. So the shirt, um, we also did a lot of looking into what would be the best, best type of shirt. We wanted something that would protect you from the sun, but would be breathable. And Jeff found this, this uh, nifty material. Oh. Very fashionable. And then on the sleeves, it'll say Trail Patrol just like on the back of the vest. And um, question. Is that, is that winter or is that all year? It could be all year. Since we're piloting this in the winter, we'll see how it does, and then we can make modifications to the uniform. Same with the vest. Like, if the vest starts to get too hot at any given point, we might want to transition from, from a vest to a backpack, which can carry all your gear. The whole idea with the vest, though, is just that you'll be carrying different things, and this has a lot of pockets to do that in a non-cumbersome way. But if it starts to get too hot, then yeah, we'll switch to a backpack. Well, that's the feedback we would like from you guys. What, what, Um, and then this is what you would be responsible for. So you can use your own pants or, or like cargo shorts. Um, we just ask that they're something that will be comfortable for you and that it is semi-professional. So maybe not like sweatpants or yoga <laughs> pants. <laughs> maybe um, something that would be like an earthy shade, like maybe green, brown. Um, we really prefer it all to be green so that we're all uniform and very recognizable out on the trail. So green shorts or pants would be the jeans are not ideal. For one, it doesn't fit with the that style that Jeff just, just explained, but also they don't breathe at all. You don't want to be hiking around in jeans. Um, and then you can use whatever boots or um, hiking shoes are comfortable for you. Just use something that you know is durable and also fits with the, the style of the uniform. Um, it's probably a good idea to have sunglasses, but that's up to you. And then for gear, you'll get some professional grade hand pruners. Um, we'll probably these will probably be communal, so when you check in, you'll you'll pick these up. Um, you can use your own if you prefer. That's your call. You'll get a first aid kit. This will have all your, your typical first aid items. There'll also be um, sunblock in there, and there will be a whistle in case of an emergency. And again, you'll get sunscreen, but you can bring your own too if you don't like ours. <laughs> the sunscreen is also for people you might encounter on the trail. Yes. And you know, it doesn't say so on here, but um, you're probably going to want to put a water bottle in your vest and carry it around for anybody you might encounter who is thirsty. We'll have, we'll have the bridge and the interpretive center stocked with water for that purpose. So the water you take out for other people is not something that you have to pay for. So there'll also be a tablet 
that you'll be carrying, and this is something that's communal, so you'll pick it up at check-in and drop it off at check-out. Um, and this has a few different functions, which we'll talk about in just a little bit. And then we really recommend that you get uh, Camelback. I think Jonathan, you're probably familiar with all this, um, but Jonathan has a do you want to pass it around? Has, has everybody seen one of these before? I think so, yeah. Yeah, I figured since cool. you guys are interested in this, this um, project, this program, but just in case. Yeah, we recommend you get your own. We you could do a communal one, but I figured people it's probably would have seen it. Very personal one. And just in case you forget, again, we'll have a, a fridge in the interpretive center stocked with, with water bottles, but really it's better for the environment mm -hmm. and it carries a lot more if you just have a camera. Can you go back to that? Is there going to be like a, a shadow case for this thing? I'm sure this thing's going to get dropped. And they're going to yes, yeah. And dirty and yeah. The most robust case possible. And we'll also <laughs> have one of those like screen protectors too because that would get nasty really quick, I'm sure. So yeah, I imagine just rolling around like that. The other thing is the camelback behind the sign on the back. Yeah, well, you can wear it under the vest. Um, but yeah, that's that's a good point. I thought about that. That's why we put like a long sleeve so we can put it on the sleeve. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. Because the only other thing I was thinking is maybe there was something, uh, a removable type of uh, patch that could go behind the, on the backpack, you know, like it's on Velcro or something, so that. Uh, let's, let's look into that. That's yeah. a good idea. Mm -hmm. Great. That's why it's a pilot program. <laughs> <laughs> what, what's the purpose of the pilot? We'll talk about that in a second. Multi-faceted. Just, just so you can check your email. <laughs> so handkerchief, like you know, you'll get sweaty out there, and also it's good for if you, I don't know, if you get grimy, or if you encounter somebody who is bloody or something like that. Actually, you should use your first aid kit for that. But the first, the handkerchief, you'll probably find a lot of purposes that you won't even know you're using for until you encounter those. Uh, binoculars, totally not necessary, but kind of fun. Makes you look kind of. <laughs> and uh, snacks, it's good to you know have a lot of calories while you're doing these hikes. How many pockets are in that bus? I think it's need a lot. Or like that. It's actually really uh, deceptive. It doesn't look like that thing, but they're like inside, outside, on the back. So you'll be able to very heavy. <laughs> I was just thinking of the snacks alone. Is one of the main stories are what the rubber gloves? That will be in your first aid kit. We will provide we will provide those for first aid. That's that's where you're going. Right? Rubber and disposable, I think. We'll yeah. Have yeah, 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 yeah. Disposable. You know, you can either carry them with or you have them in the in the first aid kit. You got to make sure you got. And if you're using, you got to replace them. You got to replace them. Yeah. Well, just you let us know you used them. We'll replace them. We'll them. So now we're going to take a little bit of time to talk about the different routes and, and the routines that you'll have when you're out on the trail. Um, so Jeff will talk about the different trail options available? So the way we've set this up is so that everybody's on the same page, we have set up, and I don't know if you could read that, but um, we've set up different courses in the, in the park, um, going everything from 0.44 miles up to Route 11, which we have called the Gauntlet, and it's 12.8 miles, and that pretty much hits every trail. <laughs> so, um, can I volunteer? Yeah. <laughs> that's the one I do. <laughs> so that, that's how, this is the system we've created so that when you sign up for a shift, you let us know which route you're taking so that way I know what's getting covered and we all the rangers know where you are or could be if something were to happen. Accountability. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know if you said this, but the route number sort of corresponds with the, the difficulty. So like route one is the easiest trail you can do and then route 11 would be and we're open, and we'll be open to new routes too. I tried to cover just about every combo, but if you come up with something down the road, we'll, we'll throw it in there. So we'll go through these, and Jeff can talk about which routes are the most preferred, um, and like how often these trails should be serviced. So first one, um, I'm sure there'll be a few docents, maybe not in this group, maybe Hank when he comes first comes back, but. <laughs> Uh, just 0.44 miles, just along the creek. A lot of traffic in this area, people coming in from the overflow lot, people trying to orient themselves at the main trailhead. Um, so that would be route one. And 
you could also sign up for today I'm going to do route one, three, and four. So you're not locked in just one. And if you want a lot of visitor contact, that's definitely a great yeah. So you just walk it back and forth is what you're talking about doing. It's, it's, it's not very long. It's right. And you need, like you say, you only have an hour you can do on one particular week, but you don't want to just not do anything, then this is something that you can do. You, you can walk it back and forth, or just do it once if you're short on time. This is mostly for our docents who aren't as able, like we literally can't go up the way of trail, but they still want to participate. Sure. So we made something that was really confirms something. And again, there will be, I don't know if you want to call it Route Zero, but we, we could have somebody just parked right in front of that new Iron Ranger that we just installed at the trailhead, who doesn't really do any patrol, who just sits in the chair and just sort of greets people as they come in and answers questions. So uh, one step up, we're going um, we're just doing the botanical loop here, and that's about 0 0.84 miles. We'll just go through these pretty quickly. Um, way up trail to the bridge stop picnic area and back. This would be one that I would like to see done on a regular basis. Um, actually, Route 2 and 3, those trails see the most traffic, I think. And so what are you thinking, like every other week or once a month? I would like to see these hit between all of us here. Um, every weekend, yeah. like routes two and three for sure. Every weekend. Uh, so hang out up on top and yeah, there's a the room there's kiosk. a slot that actually it's the next. Are, are we shooting mostly for weekends to start off? Not like we did initially with the trip. You, yeah, you can do these trail patrols anytime, but we prefer the weekends in the beginning just because of all the potential contacts you have out there. Mm -hmm. So here's an example. This is route four, I believe. Is that correct? That's right. Yeah, route four, and I've trace it out, you're going to go up the way of trail um, to the ridge top picnic area, do a loop there, come back down, then take the botanical trail down, and then hit the entire creek trail back and forth. And that's, that would be route four, that's three and a quarter miles. How long do you think it would take your average person to cover that? 45 minutes. Hour and a half. <laughs> well, you don't have to stop so, uh, talking probably. to people. Yeah, yeah no, things. good point. Talking to people, yeah, minimum of an hour and a half, I would say. To do the round or to do the one To, to do this route, the route. Oh, right. Totally. Yeah. 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 But you know, this is another thing that we're going to be asking for you to give us your feedback on because we want to know how long on average it does take people to, to do these routes so that we can mark that down and let people know. It does take a lot longer because I know I do it on the weekend sometimes and everybody just wants to talk to you. So that we it could be a couple hours, right? Right. right. Depending on chatting. Especially the afternoon. Can we get a print copy of these options? Yeah. You, so the way that this example has the actual diagram, all of them will have that diagram. Yeah. Um, and yeah, there's a checklist for each one, which we'll go over in a moment too. So this one builds on the other one, but it's going to include Manzanita. Uh, equine incline, chaparral, and the So this kind of takes you new, more to the west end of the park. So I don't know if we need to go through all of these, but it just gives you an idea. We've actually uh, stated which trails in the actual course, and then you'll get that map with the red line kind of, mm -hmm. if there's any confusion. And again, you see that they're getting progressively more involved. Yeah. As we go through 5.8, <coughs> 6. Is it, is it required to do this, or can you just kind of go do what you feel like? We want you to do the routes, and that's for your safety too, so we know where you are. And yeah, we don't want you to really veer off that path. Yeah. Say so you want us to do the route. Are you going to? I was going to ask you. Want, are you going to sign routes to us? We're not going to sign you routes. We want you to do what you want to do. We just ask that you hit those. What are these? Two trips? through four routes. Two through four, I think, are the most important to hit. But if you want to, if you feel like oh, I want to do eight today, go for it. And yeah, it's also important that you're doing the, the routes that we designate just so we know what's not being serviced and we can sort of urge people to, to cover those. So basically, though, if you're doing one of the longer hikes, you're actually covering the some other, maybe not the creek trail, but mm -hmm. the way up right. and that whole other. Yes, yeah, they, well, there's a lot of overlap okay. between the routes. And there's no so reason why two several people couldn't go off at the same time, but when you get to the top, go get the road. We're to, for the pilot program. We're going to encourage you to go in pairs in the very beginning, okay. just until we get a feel for what kind of contacts you're making, if there's any confrontation, anything like that. So 
in the very beginning, for the first couple months, you know, I'll throw a couple months out there, we want you to go in pairs. Which is so, so, so do you want to know exactly uh, what we're going to do first, second, and third as far as the routes go? First, second, and third. So, 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 so normally, like we, when Tanya and I go, we, we go straight up and then we go down the decline and then we come up uh, by the dam and then we come back down uh, by the picnic tables and then we go over to uh, the, the overlook at Lake Hodges. Okay. And back down. And then back down. So if, if that's a favorite that's our route you take and I don't have something that's pretty close to that, yeah. give me that suggestion and we'll add it to the list. Yeah, that's our that's that's what we do all the time. Okay. okay. I think the last one, number eleven, that's what I want to see. Okay. I think it probably doesn't. Okay, let's go to see if it's six. That hits about everything. It's a doozy. <laughs> okay, so it goes the opposite Yeah, direction. so that goes the opposite so way. But you're going you go. down, is that the one that's also taking you down? If you go down Cielo as well. I see, yeah, okay. So maybe we'll make another one, is the reverse Is 10 include Cielo? 10 might be close to yours. Well, because it's usually 10 and a half miles. Okay. Not. We'll add that one. Yeah, either way, on 11. I've got a question. I'm not sure if we talked about this, but what about timing aspect of this? Because I know if someone comes in and they want to hike at 2.30 when they leave, the center's going to be closed by the time they get back. Yeah. Um, is there a certain time that we use? That's where the radios will come in. Um, we prefer that you check the gear in, out and return it during our 9 o'clock to 3 o'clock dosing hours at the interpretive center. But if you wanted to get out on the trail right at 8 or you wanted to do an afternoon one, just coordinate it with us and we'll figure it out. But yeah, that's a good point. We do it, it, we do need to coordinate. But that gets you back in when you still have a lot of people up on the trip. Right. So if you wanna so, you wanna leave it too? No, I'm saying no well leave it not leave it to but I'm thinking you wanna be at, have people out on the trail at four. Yeah. And if, if that happens, you can just coordinate with the rangers and they can meet you at the IC because the IC will shut down at 3. And sometimes people might not even be covering that 12 to 3 ship. So if there's a case where you want to go outside of the, the docent hours of the IC, then just coordinate with one of the rangers and have them come meet you. And I, and I was also thinking just the key to the day. Yeah. yeah. You know, I, I, the thing is, a lot of people go up there to see this. You know, right before the sunset to go to the picnic area. And so they're coming down very close to that 7 o'clock or whatever. Which would work because the docent will be there at closing time. So if you wanted to time your hike so that you're coming down at closing time, there's always going to be a range there. Right so the range on that those Yeah. Right. Right. And a, another thing we've thought about, and I don't know how we would make this work, but we could maybe have some kind of a secure locker down there. And then when you're in the trail patrol program, you would issue a key, and you can check the gear in and out by yourself. So that might be where we, end up. if this coordination becomes a little bit too much of a hassle, we might go to some kind of a system like that, where it's a self check out and check in. That would be perfect, isn't it? That matters we're supposed to go. Yeah, we might be able to do that there. So we'll see how it works. What's the DDHC PTS? Del Dio's Highlands. Oh, right the, at the top the, there. The okay. trail connect where there's that information. Yeah. Yeah. The, um, the two person requirement I can see being really constraining. I mean, trying to coordinate with somebody else for the same time slot to go out. Okay, yeah, no, I, you're <laughs> right. Um, and as we work through this training, maybe we'll reassess that at the end and. To get a four hour time slot exactly when it's somebody else. That's true. We could say that it's preferred, but not mandatory. We just, you know, we, we want you all to be safe on the trails. So we were thinking more to with the, the buddy system. But again, if it's not conducive to actually ever have anybody get the, the chance to go out there because they can't find somebody who's scheduled just with their own, yeah, we might have to make some exceptions. Yeah, yeah that's a good point, yeah. And so primarily, is this like uh, an outreach to the people that are using the trails, or is it more of a uh, trail maintenance? 
great question. And that's sort of a good segue into the next section we get okay. into. We talk about all the different responsibilities that you have out there. Um, and let me know when we will get to the section. If your answer, if your question isn't answered, then ask again. But I'm pretty sure we'll answer it. So, um, so those are the different routes, and then these are the routines when you get to the routes. So, um, the very first thing you'll do is you'll you'll go to the interpretive center and you'll check in. Come with all of your your uniforms already intact or on, and then there's some gear that you'll need to take that's communal that you'll have to pick up there. So, um, what exactly will they be picking up? So you'll be picking up your vest. Oh, you know what we didn't put in here is hiking yeah. poles. Of course, some people like to hide the poles, some people don't, so that would be on your list. But you'll um, check out your vest and. Preloaded in the vest, we'll have, we'll have the, those pruners, the first aid, the sunscreen. Um, you'll pick up some water there. You'll check out the tablet. You'll check out a radio. Um, I don't think there's anything else. That's interesting. Yeah. yeah. So those are the gloves. Yeah. Gloves. Yeah. Stuff like that. Yeah. And again, if you want your own gloves, bring them. But if not, they'll all be gloves that you can check out. And you, you like literally have to check them out. And then when you bring them back, you'll have to. Let, that, let us know that you checked it in, yeah. Um, so you also, when you're out on the trail, we'll cover these a little bit more in depth in just a second. Actually, let me just throw these all up. So these are basically, to answer your question, Devin, these are the, the essential duties that you'll be doing out there. And then we'll sort of get more in depth with each of these. So sort of covered this. Um, as far as being a, an ambassador goes, you're, when you're out there, you know, you're representing the Elephant Forest Reserve, but also since the Elephant Forest Reserve is part of a partnership between the, the Water District and the um, Escanita Creek Conservancy, you're sort of representing all of us. So it's just really important that, you know, you're professional, you're very courteous with everybody, and, you know, you definitely have to follow the rules because you want to lead by example. So don't be like smoking and having your dog off the leash. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> I got to that one. Yeah. Yeah. Smokes, right? <laughs> okay. um, again, yeah, follow the rules. Um, you'll you'll prob probably have people who ask you questions who don't.